This is Adam from Jim's IT Penrith. I've got a couple of our franchisees here with us as well. We've got Steve and Rowan. Steve is Sestock hey. and Rowan is from Ride. Right. So we do help each other. We tend to feed off each other's information. Um, I've been in IT, what, 23, 24 years. I think Steve's about the same. Um, yeah. Rowan's been in about 10 years, I think, Rowan. Something like that, yeah, about 10 years, um, but more focused on on businesses and stuff like that. But uh, it's good to see both sides of, um, yeah. of the coin. While we are individual business owners with the Jim's IT group, we do work with each other, so we do um, have a lot of experience off that. So today, what we're going to actually talk about is scams. And this is going to be an ongoing topic that we're going to talk about over the next couple of weeks. The first scam we're going to talk about is the invoice scam. Um, Steve, have you, what, what's your um, knowledge of the invoice scam? Um, just the, having an email sent out to you um, stating from a, a company, PayPal or Netflix saying that you owe a certain amount of money to to them for for services. And Rowan, what 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 do you know of it? Um, so I've I've seen more sort of sophisticated scams where they um they will get access to a email account. Um, what they do is they forward all the emails to one of their own email accounts, um, so that they don't have to keep logging into your account. Um, they get all your emails and they just monitor for it. Um, and when they get an email that has anything like invoice or payment or anything like that, um, they flag that. And then what they try to do is they reproduce that that invoice. Um, they then change the details on there. So they'll change the bank account details, for example, um, to their own. And then they'll, they'll then forward that on to uh the intended sort of recipient is expecting that invoice um they're expecting from that person and they see the bank details and they pay it the the person assumes that they haven't got a got a payment yet um and then you know down the track when they follow up um they get this oh we've already paid yep. um, and and by that point the money's long gone Unfortunately, I've seen both those sides of that, that, yeah, they use a technique called phishing to get logging details to um, people's email accounts. Basically, what a phishing attempt is, is me sending, say, you guys an email um, asking for your username and passwords, for your email, say, I'm doing a security check, I need to get your username and password to verify it's up. Then the hacker or the scammer will use that information to actually log in to your email server and duplicate your emails and forward invoices out to people or within the company um, exactly what Rowan said and change the banking details and get them to pay you. And this type of scam is becoming massively prevalent in Australia at the moment. Yes, one, one of the key factors in, in all of that is once they've got access to your email account, you don't actually know. Um, so I've, I've seen it where uh, a person's had access to somebody's email account for a year yep. and they've just sat there. They're just patiently waiting and eventually it comes through um, and eventually they change the details or um, you get, you get a, um, you get an invoice from um, somebody that you're expecting and they've quickly deleted it, changed the details and then resent it to you. Exactly. Um, yeah. And they're like, yep, I paid it and the details are different. The best ways to combat this um, is only make payments to, to people that you've already got saved. Um, so if you've been paying a, a bill for, you know, let's say six months, a year or whatever, keep paying to that same account. If anybody yeah, so ever, suddenly you get you suddenly get this account or this invoice from someone and it's completely different and the font seems different and or the only thing that's different is the bank account details. I mean, straight away that that should flag you. Um, and what I've found is that most companies are more than happy for you to call and double check those account details. Yeah. So that's kind of all you need to do if you if you suspect anything um, is, is call up uh, that company, 
say, hey, I'm paying this invoice. Now these details have changed from last time. Is this Can right? Please, or is this right? Has that happened? Can you please confirm um, something along those lines? And they will tell you straight out. Because I mean, hey, I mean, it could be the case where even the right, Steve, that the company actually has changed their details. Yeah. So and I mean, I, I don't think it, they would care, like Rowan said, that hey, you ring up and say, hey guys, look, I've got this invoice. It doesn't look right. What do you do? Well, that's the best way to do it, is because otherwise, uh, if you if you don't and you do and you do pay out, you then, then you've lost everything that you've um, organised. Well, that's it. I mean, especially with emails these days, like. Luckily, the IT division in gyms, we use a pretty um, sophisticated email system and our passwords are pretty hectic and that type of thing. But general use emails, like um, passwords are so easy, like especially when they're using techniques like phishing. And yeah. phishing is what it sounds like. So we're putting out a hook and hoping that someone will get on that hook and sort of um, be the bait on there. But like, what would you suggest I guess, guys, would be the best way for people to prevent that, like prevent themselves getting hooked like that. Uh, I, I guess my, my best tips um, is check who you're receiving the email from. Um, so if it's from Telstra, for example, make sure it says telstra.com.au. The other kind of thing is whenever you're putting your details in, make sure it's a legitimate website or it's a legitimate um request yeah. most companies won't ask for your details when it comes to email protection and protecting your actual email like so how would you go about like that would you think about using something like two-factor authentication or something like that suggesting to your small businesses to use that uh, I, I would go with a two-factor authentication as much of a hassle as it may be yeah um it's, it's best to protect yourself rather than to um accidentally clicking on the wrong link or putting the password in the wrong spot. So even if someone did have your password and was able to log in, they'd still need that two-factor authentication, wouldn't they? Then they would because, I mean, I've had uh, an issue um, on, a, on a similar scam base thing where um, I've received a notification from Disney Plus saying that somebody logged into my account and tried to access uh, movies or something. If I didn't have that two-factor authentication, I wouldn't have known that. Yep. And I was able to get straight out of Disney straight away and, and get everything changed so that um, it wasn't visible again. I guess the scary thing too when it comes to people being able to access your email, we now get like 90% of our lives into our email accounts, don't we? So um, the moment someone's got access to your email, they've got access to your personal information, they've got access to what you're doing on a daily basis. And like... Um, you guys said previous that um, people can sit in there for a year and collect the information that they want slowly and surely to be able to just not send fake email or invoices out to people, but actually cause a lot of harm in someone's life. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I know an example just recently um, with a client that I, I, I now deal with, a business client, that they were actually saving up money for a deposit for a home loan. And um, someone had managed to hack into their lawyer's email account and sent a invoice to that particular person claiming that they were the lawyer and changed bank account details. Those people paid $57,000 to this new lawyer or the new bank account, didn't think about it, so they just lost their deposit for the home loan. But it's so important to look at every bit of information on an invoice that's sent to you. Like you'll have times that you're expecting an invoice on say the 15th of the month and you get it on the 10th. That is a huge indicator that something's wrong. Yeah. Um, like what would be, I'll start with Steve, but five tips that you'd give people. Well, for, first and foremost is don't click on anything that you are unsure of. Never give out your password. Uh, always check for correct grammar and uh, English speech. I guess and, when you're getting emails from me, yeah, that's a, that's oh, a hard yeah, one that's because different. my grammar is shocking <laughs> and I'm sending emails to you guys. So if it was correct, then I guess you'd know that it was something wrong. Like, exactly. Yep. Um, what else would I do? Check the email address. Make sure that the email address looks legitimate. Um, even I've, I've even seen stuff from Telstra that the email address is Gmail. 
And that's not right. So always check the email, check your grammar, check the uh, – don't click on links. I think that's the biggest get, one, isn't it? Don't click on links. Yeah. Like, not unless you're sure of it. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw one today, like – Unfortunately, my daughter didn't get tickets to Taylor Swift, and that was devastated. But I saw one on TikTok today that actually said, "Hey, click on this link here for um, unreleased tickets to Taylor Swift." Uh, and I mean, you can you imagine how many people were going to click on that? Like, you, yeah. you don't click on anything that you like. Yeah, yeah. it's it, it's the biggest advice, guys, that we can give you. Just don't click on links. Like, even if you get the email from your bank or from Facebook and it looks legit, don't click on it. Call the bank on their actual phone number. Go to the bank's website. Don't rely on the email address or the phone number in that message. Call the actual website. Call the bank. Like, go to their website. It's the biggest advice I can give. Like, what are you? What would you say, Rowan? Um, yeah, I mean, you guys have covered most of it. Um, the other thing I would suggest is is probably reaching out to your, your local gym's IT person um, and, and getting them to have a little look. Um, they can normally spot these things quite, quite easily. Um, normally, there's like a, a simple forwarding rule in your email um, that will just kind of give it away. Um, but but in saying that, um, we can also help you with sort of antivirus, um, email protection, security platforms that will block suspicious links, for example. Um, so that will kind of give you the heads up that, hey, this link is suspicious. Um, don't click on it. Sometimes, yes, you have to pay a bit of money for, for some antivirus or email security. Um, but like Adam said, you can end up losing 50, 60,000 uh, I've seen companies lose hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, so, you know, if you if you weigh up, you know, the, a small cost for a security um, application um, versus the amount of money you could lose, um, it, it, it ends up being kind of worth it. So, for, unfortunately, no one's immune to this either. Like, you've got the biggest businesses being hit by it. Like, um, it, it's moving on a little bit from the like people do feel silly when they click on these things, but look, I'm here to say, and I, I'm sure these guys would probably agree, you're not silly for doing this. Like these scammers are playing with your emotions and playing uh, and playing with the fact that they know you're busy. So if you get a link in your email, you're more than likely going to click it. If you that you see an email that looks similar, even 90% similar to a Telstra email or from um your bank or whatever, you're going to click it because you're in the back of your head, you kind of trust that. Try to break that habit. Take that extra two seconds and look at the email. That's when you can reach out to us and um, we can walk you through that and we can give you a half an hour lesson or an hour lesson or whatever of what to look out for. When, I mean, there's nothing that is too hard for us to help you with. Um, so I guess if you're unsure, just don't do it. Or said here, if you need us, um, Jim's group or Jim's IT will uh, able to help you with any IT issues, really. I mean, there's nothing that we can't help you with. So 131546. Um, yeah, we've, we've got a good group of guys and girls around Australia, so don't hesitate to give us a call, even if you just need advice. Um, I've got business clients that just generally ring me for advice, and that's what we're here there for as well. Yep. Is there any other advice that you guys want to give? It doesn't have to be about this. Like, Anything that you've seen recently that people should watch out for, or no? I think that that kind of covers covers the most of it. I don't know, Stephen. Do you have any anything? Not the moment. And ticket scams, like we just said about um, yeah, yeah, contents. That's huge at the moment. Like yeah. I, I think at last count, the Taylor Swift scam. I saw there's about a hundred different websites um, selling tickets to Taylor Swift. I mean, if you're getting an eighty dollar ticket to Taylor Swift, you know you're not getting a ticket. Guys, I guess. Um, the bigger message now, um, while we're heading off, just be vigilant. Um, you've got a massive team here um, that you can call and ask for help. Um, you can reach out on our Facebook page, Jim's IT. Um, I've got an individual Facebook page, Jim's IT Penrith. Um, the other two guys can be reached directly through the Jim's group. Um, you can ask for Rowan. Rowan's within Sydney um, metropolitan areas. I'm in Western Sydney. Steve's down some whoop whoop. Area down <laughs> Sydney way Cess somewhere. Cessnock, Newcastle. Cessnock. So, and <laughs> Sydney will covered, Melbourne will covered, Adelaide, WA, 
even New Zealand, if you're in New Zealand and need to reach out to us, we can do remote support as well. So nothing's off limits. But guys, look, thanks very much for joining us to today, tonight, wherever we are. And if you've got any suggestions or anything that you want information on, please let us know. It doesn't have to be on scams. It can be on different computers. You can ask questions on gaming computers and things like that. Um, office setups, we're happy to help. But again, thanks guys for watching and uh, hopefully we'll see you next time.